Hey, Joe here from Home Studio Corner. I want to show you the trash mic that we used in that drum session I did last week. The way we did this. So normal drum recording, you've heard it before. Usually what I use, kick one, kick two, so maybe two kick mics, snare top, snare bottom, tom one, tom two, overhead left, overhead right, and then a room mic or two. In addition to that, a couple years ago, I started adding what I'm calling a fat mic, which is just usually a ribbon microphone just in front of the kit. So a few feet away, just capturing the kit. Different perspective can be helpful depending on what you're going for in the mix. This time, we added another component and another toy that made a really interesting, sorry, mic, contribution to the sound. So Tim Horsley brought over two things, a Cascade Fathead ribbon mic, which I already had two of them set up for other things, but he brought another one, and then he brought his Distressor. Now, a Distressor is a really well-known compressor that's not known for being subtle or clean. It adds a lot of grit to the sound, really great for bass, and a lot of people run all sorts of drums through them, from room mics to snare mics to everything in between. What we decided to do was to use this ribbon mic and to set it up as kind of a trash mic, and then run it through a preamp, through the distressor, and then just crush the daylights out of it to create a cool sound that we can blend in with the rest of the kit. Now the placement of the microphone is what was unique. Not, not that we it's never been done before, of course not. Uh, it's just something unique to me. I'd never done it exactly this way. So we put the microphone directly over the kick drum. So imagine I'm the drummer, I'm facing you, the kick drum's right here in front of me, and my snare is just a little off to the side. So maybe I'm sitting like this. So we put the microphone right over the kick drum. So here's the top of the kick drum shell, just a few inches above, and had it facing the drummer. So it's picking up a lot of kick drum sound because it's just so close to the kick drum, but it's also picking up a lot of snare. And being that it's a ribbon microphone, it's not picking up as much of the cymbals because the, the null point of the microphone is pointing up at the cymbals. It's still got a lot of that because we squashed it like crazy. But the predominant sound is kick and snare. And what ended up happening, once we dialed in a really aggressive compression sound with the right attack and release, it added this kind of punch and this life to the mix as we were listening on headphones and getting ready to lay it down. So I'm going to play you the raw tracks here in my session and give you an idea of what it sounds like, okay? All right, so I've labeled this the trash mic, and let me play it for you by itself. Again, you're listening to this with no plugins other than I flipped the polarity of it because it sounded better flipped. But there's no, there's no EQ, there's no compression on these tracks except for that distressor that we used on the way in. So here is the, uh, let me find a spot. So by itself, it's already a cool drum sound. You could probably do that in overheads, and if, if that's all you had, you could probably make a good drum mix out of that. Just listen to it. Huge kick drum and then snappy snare drum, and it's it's distorted. It's there's lots of room there. There's lots of noise, but it's not over the top. It's actually really pleasant sounding still. Now here's the rest of the drum kit uh, without the trash mic. And what I'll do is I'll play it for a few bars, and then I'll just move the fader up on the trash mic so you can hear what it's adding to the drum mix. The drum mix by itself is completely passable. Works great. You could totally get a great mix out of this. But having this extra fader of awesome ends up adding something, I think, to the sound of the mix. So let me hit play and I'll fade it in. So there are things I would change, like maybe I'd go and EQ that ring, that gong, 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 whatever frequency that is. I'd go find it and maybe bring it down a little bit if it was bothering me in the mix. But I've learned to leave those in, at least for now, because in the full mix it actually adds to the character. So I don't try to go notch those out as quickly as I used to. But it, it just adds, the kick drum feels bigger, the snare feels bigger, it feels a little more mixed just by adding in this one track. Now let me do it again and I'll click the mute button on and off. I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And just listen to what's happening. Obviously the kick and snare are louder, obviously it's adding volume. But there's more to it than that. There's some tone and some kind of messiness there. This wouldn't work on a jazz record probably. 
But for a rock song where it just needs just big, all over the place, just huge drum sound, this is a great thing to add. So I'll start it off with it muted, and then I'll go back and forth a few times so you can hear it one more time. And just if you're curious, here's what that fat mic sounds like. It's that same microphone without all the compression, just off the kit a little bit. Actually gets a good sound of the outer kick drum, which works really well in the mix. But yeah, this trash mic that we used, is ju it just adds so much to both kick and snare without adding a lot more of anything else in the cymbals and everything else. It's just cool. Next time you track drums, try it. You don't have to have a distressor. You could just put a microphone in that position and then go add a bunch of compression later. That's completely legit. And that way you don't have to worry about dialing it in on the way in. You can just have it there clean and then mangle it to your heart's content. Okay? If you do, go and do that. Come leave a comment. Let us know how it turned out. I'm super curious to hear how it works for you. And if you want to check out more about recording, fun stuff, tips, advice, habits to try, check out my recording cheat sheet at recordingcheatsheet.com. It's a mouthful. It's completely free. Enter your email. I'll send you the PDF, and you can check it out and get better recordings by the weekend. All right, I'm done. Got to go. See you.